was just as bright as he remembered Sirius to be last night. And then he happened to know the inverse square law, which I hope many of you know, and was able then to calculate how far away you'd have to move the sun. And he came out with the answer of about half a light year. Uh, that is, it would take light about half a year to go from here to Sirius. Had Sirius, in fact, been intrinsically as bright as the sun, he would have gotten exactly the right answer. In fact, Sirius is brighter, so he uh, got it a little bit wrong. But he came very close within a factor of 10. Um, and uh, it's an astonishing achievement that, uh, that Huygens did. And it suddenly made a universe vast and awesome beyond ordinary human understanding. Many people like Pascal said that they were frightened by the great spaces between the stars. The stars, the space is amazingly empty. Now, I would like to close with a uh, little discussion about the nearby stars. When we look out at night, we see the constellations. Many of you have probably been forced to memorize uh, certain patterns of dots uh, as uh, if they were somehow uh, firmly embedded in nature as opposed to arbitrary psychological projective tests forced on innocent children by astronomers. Um, so, for example, many of you know what I call the Big Dipper and you know as I think the Great Bear or the Plow. Look at that. In America, we think it's a thing that you pick up liquids with, and in Britain you think it's either a bear or an agricultural implement. Now those are three quite different things. That must be merely what's in people's minds and nothing to do with what's out there. Now what is a constellation? Constellation is a configuration of dim but nearby stars, bright and more distant stars, which by accident happen to be in the same part of the sky when you look up. Now, I've been so annoyed at this uh, business of forcing everybody to learn constellation that I've made uh, as strong an effort as I've been able uh, not to learn the constellations. So I know only a few, and those only by accident. I didn't mean to learn them. One of them I learned for this sort of lecture. Uh, and uh, what I've always wanted to do is to find some new constellation and give some absolutely silly designation to it and make everybody have to learn that. But that's hard to do because all the constellations have been named. The ones in the Southern Hemisphere more recently, so you'll find the constellation of the microscope, the constellation of the telescope. And I guess if they had been discovered still more recently, you would have the constellation of the refrigerator and things of, of that sort. Well, there are no new constellations to be discovered around here. What we have to do is go to some other place where the constellations are different and no human being has uh, named them yet. How far away do we have to go? We clearly have to go some distance comparable to the distances between the stars themselves. We must go many light years. A light year, the distance light travels in a single year, is about six trillion miles. It's a big distance. Now, we can't yet do that. Voyager is, in fact, on its way to the stars, but it will take some 50,000 years to go the distance to the nearest star, and that's a little sluggish for the purposes of this lecture. Um, so what we can do, however, is to ask a computer which knows the three-dimensional positions of all the nearby stars to draw us a picture of what the sky would look like from this place or that. So let's start out looking at such a picture, first from the standpoint of, uh, of the Earth, so that uh, we can see some recognizable objects. So here we have the constellations as seen from the sun. These are in the northern hemisphere. And uh, this constellation right here is the dipper bear plow. Uh, maybe you can see the handle of the dipper in the bowl here. I guess this is the body of the bear and the tail. Uh, and I can't see how that's a plow. Maybe, you know, maybe that's the plow and that's the reins and there isn't any horse. Maybe. Anyway, everybody knows that constellation. Even I know that constellation. And over here is the North Star. Uh, by the way, all these nice dashed lines and numbers are, of course, not on the sky. If they were on the sky, that would make all of this much easier. But I would like to call your attention to uh, this configuration, which is an up 
down, up, down, as you can see. And it's called Cassiopeia. And as everybody can plainly see, that's a lady sitting in a chair upside down in the sky. <laughs> now, let us ask the computer to look at the stars in the same region of the sky, but from the vantage point of the nearest star, a place called Alpha Centauri. Well, when we do that, we see, thank you, here is the Big Dipper Plow Bear, exactly the same. Here is the North Star in exactly the same position. Why are they the same? Why aren't they different? Why haven't we changed our perspective enough to have the constellations change as well? And the answer is that we have not gone far enough. There is, in fact, only a single change in this picture, and that is in Cassiopeia. Here's Cassiopeia, and it is, as before, an up, down, up, down. The only difference is there's another up. There's a new star which wasn't there before. What star is that? It's the sun. That is our star as seen from Alpha Centauri. Of course, the sun is not in our night sky, because if it were, it wouldn't be night. That's the difference between <laughs> day and night. So we have to go a bigger distance. So let us now look at the constellations from in the vicinity of the Earth again, but not in the uh, northern celestial hemisphere, but in the broad range of middle celestial latitudes. And I want to ask you to memorize all of these uh, stars. But in here are all the zodiacal constellations, what, what people ask you about when they ask you, uh, what sign are you? Uh, I like to say slow school zone ahead. Uh, but what they mean is uh, astrological signs, uh, the sign of the water carrier, or uh, the scales, or the lion, or the virgin. All of those are supposed to be in here. I can't see any of them. But um, what we can ask the computer to do is to move a distance, let's say, to the nearest star like the sun. That's a place called Tau Ceti. And uh, ask it to draw the constellations in this part of the sky. And when we do that, we find that there are uh, enough apparent motions of the stars that we get new constellations. And so I thought it would be fun then to finally put my exotic new constellation in the sky of Tau Ceti. And uh, I thought I'd make up a constellation of the unicorn. But since there are, there's already a constellation of the unicorn in our sky, I figured I'd make a special six-legged unicorn. Uh, so you'd know it was a fake unicorn, not a real unicorn, like the ones we have here. And uh, I thought that the artist would do the six legs uh, two, two, and two, uh, like insects uh, on the Earth. But uh, as you can see, what the artist did was a quite creditable three and three. <laughs> now, the constellations are quite different here. And so I'm finally able to make my constellation the unicorn. The sun is, in fact, a uh, star in this sky. And by a strange accident, it is, in fact, that star right there. <laughs> now, I imagine that there would be some problem for the scientist who lived on a planet of Tau Ceti who proposed that there was life on a planet that circled the star which joined the unicorn's tail to its rump. It sounds unlikely. You cannot tell just by looking at the stars which have planets which planets are inhabited, or anything of that sort. And as our last slide reminds us, there are an immense number of stars. There are visible to the naked eye only some thousands of stars. In this picture, there are uh, perhaps 10,000 stars. But in the Milky Way galaxy, of which we are a part, there are some 200 50,000 million stars. Were we to move only 30 light years away, we would be unable to even see the sun with the naked eye. And that is 1,000th of the distance from here to the center of the galaxy. We live in a galaxy vast and awesome, beyond ordinary imagining. We live on a planet which seems typical, a star which seems typical, in fact, in a galaxy, which seems typical. And the great question of questions is whether what we have here is indeed typical or is it in some way unique.
We will explore that in later lectures.